title to the book of the Revelation. Book of the Revelation, chapter number one. This morning. Yeah, I thank the Lord for each of you being here. Uh, this morning, as we always do, we miss you when you're not here. Uh, sometimes people think, well, you know, no one missed me. Uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, as I sat there, I'm not asleep. I might act like it, but I'm watching as you come in. So this morning, a few answered prayers walk in. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I, I thank God for each of you. Mentioning prayers, if you will. Remember Lana's family, her niece passed away uh, this week also. And there uh, in your prayers, if you would. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Everybody sitting right here will have to give more. <laughs> I think the electric company keeps taking that one off or maybe we're not giving enough there. I'm not sure. But uh, it'll be okay. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, <laughs> I, I I do thank the Lord for you all, and uh, I, I thank the Lord this morning as I look over the congregation. Uh, you know, I, I see all age people. I, I find some that are older than I am. Now, when I started pastoring, everybody was older than me. Uh, but now then, that's not true anymore and uh, a few of you got me beat a little bit but it's only a little bit but I thank God for you and I thank God that you're able to come and be here each day and then I'm thankful as I look out and see the young ones um, saw Rick bouncing one on his knee <laughs> one time I think he bounced hard I seen him go climb up <laughs> And damn, uh, I thank the Lord for the ones yonder in the nursery and in the ones in the junior church. And, uh, thank the Lord. And I thank the Lord this morning for Mike and Olivia's baby being with us this morning. Mercy, Amen. Mercy Lynn, we're thankful uh, for this. But I beg of you. Parents, grandparents, get your children to the house of God and keep them there. Yes. And keep them there. Amen. And then uh, someone said to me, uh, a couple uh, mentioned Micah coming in out of the hospitals and all, and uh, uh, how he's been a blessing. And I, I, I thank God for that. Amen. You know, I, I cannot go the way I did. Uh, I went into a hospital the other day and I hardly, hardly made it out. Mm. And it took about three days to get over yeah. uh, being in there. But that's okay. Uh, but I thank the Lord. Or my, Amen. someone said the other day, well, preacher, you're, you're our preacher. And uh, I thank God for that. Amen. But folks, Mike is your preacher. Right. Right. Amen. 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 Mike is your preacher. Uh, also, uh, there was uh, an Elijah, but not far behind was Elisha. Mm -hmm. There was a Moses, and not far behind was Joshua. Uh, there's a timing in all things. And so I just, I just wanted to say, uh, y'all pray for Mike. Uh, it's, uh, I, I thank you for how good 
you have been to him. And I thank you all for what you've done for my wife and I through the years. Uh, Hayes have taken care of us. But I ask you to take care of him. Amen. And Olivia and the baby also. Uh, I, I thank the Lord if he carries his coming. I hope he leaves us here uh, where we can work. I'm not planning on going anywhere uh, anytime soon. Uh, but I, I, I do want you to know uh, for his sake, uh, folks, it's uh, it's not easy coming in where he is where I was many years ago, where most of them are older than him. And uh, you say, well, I think he ought to do this. And I think he ought to do that. Well, I think he ought to do what the Lord wants. Amen. And uh, uh, you say, well, I've been talking to the Lord and the Lord told me to tell him. Well, the Lord don't need no go-between. That's right. Amen. Had someone call one day and said, Preacher, um, the Lord wants me and told me to come preach this morning. I said, that'd be fine just as soon as the Lord calls me. Amen. <laughs> um, but not until that time. So y'all, Y'all be with him. Uh, pray for him and help him out. And they're, they want to do God's will. Amen. They want to do what the Lord wants Amen. them to do. But I tell you, that you all are a blessing to him. This morning, uh, as I come in to church this morning, uh, I still had no idea what I was preaching. Uh, I've had two messages on my mind, and uh, uh, I really prayed and prayed and prayed. And uh, uh, the Lord didn't call me. Uh, maybe because I left my phone in the <laughs> office and all. But really, the Lord don't need a cell phone. That's right. Uh, because it talks in that still small voice. But uh, this morning as we come in, then in the first hour, uh, the song that Jackie and uh, whatever her name, I'll call her Wendy, but uh, I don't think that's her name, Lindsay. Uh, they, they sang, and I said, well, Lord, I, I think I'm getting the message. And talked about heaven, how good heaven will be, how great it will be to see him, to hear him say, well done. Amen. And you know, folks, uh, the world we live in is never the friend of the child of God. That's right. It's, it, it, it's a hard world. But that's why Jesus said to his children, I'll be with you. Amen. You know, you never walk alone when you're a child of God. For the Lord is walking with you, and he will be with us, each one. And then uh, some of the songs that have been sung, uh, speaking about heaven, and then the song that Bethany just sung about We'll stay with the old paths. Amen. We'll stay with the old ways. And folks, I, I, I really believe that the old way, now when I say the old way, I'm, I'm talking about this way. Amen. Uh, the Word of God. And I, I think we need to stay with the old way. And uh, this morning, by the grace of God, I want to speak to you about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The second coming of our Lord. Now, uh, I just said that, and then I looked down and I'm scared uh, <laughs> because I'm at the other message I've heard. So, 
back uh, this morning. Uh, the Word of God, we find the promise of the Lord's coming. I have people say, Preacher, when you were young, 40 years ago, uh, when you came here, you were preaching about that the Lord would return. And Preacher, He's not come yet. Well, I uh, remember this too. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. It's just been a couple of days. Right? <laughs> Don't get in too big a hurry. God is still working. Mark it down. He's still on schedule. Amen. Amen. God never gets off of schedule. He's always on time. I heard a song last night. It's a beautiful song. But even if he's uh, four days late, he's just on time. And he always is. And so this morning, the promise of the Lord's return in Revelation chapter 1. I just want to take one verse as we begin. Revelation chapter 7 and uh, or chapter 1 and verse number 7. It says, Behold, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, come. Amen. Behold, 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 he come. My friends, he may have not been back on our schedule, but he, he, he still got the schedule. He's still on time, and he is still coming. As we look into the Word of God, you'll find from Genesis 1 through Revelation 22, you will find that on the average, one out of every 25 verses is speaking about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. One out of every 25, and we're talking about average uh, here. We find uh, the second coming of the Lord. Uh, it's, a, uh, it, it's a great uh Thought is a great realization that he is coming. Uh, sometimes people say, well, preacher, I don't want the Lord to come. My family is not saved. Well, that's why the Lord has told us to work. The Lord has told us to reach out to these. You know, day by day, we're going to try to reach them. But there's always going to be lost people. If the Lord doesn't come back to everyone is saved, the Lord's never coming back. For well, we know from the Word of God that everybody will not come to the Lord. Now, we also know that He died for everyone. We know that the blood He shed was for the sins of the whole world. But we find the second coming is a comforting hope. My, uh, 1 Thessalonians, we find it's a challenging, a challenging hope, if you will. We find the second coming is a purifying hope. We find that the second coming for the child of God is the blessed hope, the blessed hope of the coming of Jesus. Now, we are to love the uh, his second coming, his appearance of uh, the second coming uh, because of the one who is coming. My friend, the second coming is speaking about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who will come again. Now, we find in the verse I just read, we find those words and it tells us there, behold, he, we're going to look at he, 
He cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. They also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. In that verse, I find four or five promises that I want us to look at. In this one little verse, these promises that the Lord makes for us. Number one promise is that Jesus is certainly coming again. Jesus is coming again. Now, this He, this Jesus, this is the same Jesus who some 2,000 plus years ago who came into this world and he came to be our sin bearer. He came to pay for our sins. But my friend, when he comes back the next time, he's not coming to uh, die for us. He's coming again. Uh, his second coming will be in victory. It'll be in glory. And it will be in power. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. We find that for four thousand plus years we find that uh, that behold he cometh we find the people waiting for Jesus' first coming we find the promise made in Genesis chapter 3 of the one who would come to defeat Satan the one who would come to take our place but then we find with that promise, but yet 4,000 years they didn't see. For 4,000 years he did not come. But my Bible tells me then oh that word then then in the fall of time. In the fall of time, she brought forth her first born child. We find then in the fall of time, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. We find that babe, much like the babes that we see here this morning, there wasn't any halos, there wasn't any of this stuff that the world has painted the terrible pictures for us. When he came, he was like any other child except he was born of the Holy Spirit of God. He was born of the Spirit of God. He was the virgin born son of Mary. He was the son of God. And then at Bethlehem, he came to provide salvation to provide salvation for all who would trust in him. He came and he just stopped over at Bethlehem. He was on his way to Calvary. And oh my friend, when he came the first time, all the prophecies that related to his first coming were fulfilled. Every promise concerning his first coming 
was fulfilled. Now we await. Now we await his second coming. My friend, when he comes again, all the prophecies relating to his second coming will be literally fulfilled. He will. He will come. The most prophesied fact in the word of God revealed to us in the word of God is that Jesus Christ is coming. That promise that the Lord is literally coming again. I want you to consider number one his coming was anticipated by all the Old Testament prophecies. There is more prophecies concerning the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ than there was concerning his first coming. And when he came the first time, Every one of those prophecies were fulfilled. And I got good news for you. Every one concerning his second coming will be fulfilled. And personally, I believe it won't be long. Amen. Now, not only was it anticipated by the Old Testament prophecies, we find that his second coming was promised by Jesus himself in the book of John. And he said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and chapter number 25, we find time and again the verses and Jesus speaking, speaking of himself about his second coming. He came the first time as promised. He will come the second time as promised. We find that his coming, second coming uh, was confirmed by the angel. We find uh, in Acts 1, 11, the angels there speaking and uh, said this same Jesus which was taken up from you shall so come again in like manner. We find the apostles uh, spoke and proved uh, of his second coming. For time's sake, I won't go to all of them. But, but we find the apostle Paul uh, speaking of his second coming. We find Peter speaking of it. We find James speaking of it. We find John speaking of it, and we find Jude. Ah, uh, and Enoch there in verse 14, also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with the ten thousands of his saints. We find that all the apostles proclaim the fact of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And his second coming, we find, is the theme of the book of the Revelation. We find his coming was verified by the Holy Spirit of God. We find he come to the end of the book there in chapter 22 and verse 20. It says, he which testified these things say, surely, surely, I come quick. And even so come, Lord Jesus. You say, well, preacher, he coming quickly. Been over 2,000 years. He's not talking about that. He's talking about in that split second. In that split second, he will come. I find that his second coming will be with the clouds according to 
our text verse. That when Jesus went away, we find that there wasn't many there to see him go. We find in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 9, it, it says there, and when he spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Lord Father took him up in the clouds out of their sight under his presence. And when he returns, though, when he comes again, he will be riding on the clouds of heaven. He'll come in victory. He will come in glory. And he will come back again to this earth in order to celebrate here the victory that he gained when he conquered Satan and when he overcame sin and death on Calvary's cross and when he arose from the grave. At his first coming, he came in weakness. The Bible tells us that men despised and they rejected the lowly Jesus. They did not want him. They cast him out. In John 1, 11, he came into his own and his own received him not. In the book of Luke chapter 19, it says we will not have this man to reign over us at his first coming. They did not warn him. But when he comes again, my friend, he will be common in mind. He'll be common in power. Again, Revelation said, Behold, he cometh with the clouds. When the Lord comes back in glory, and when he comes back in power, he will not be by himself. He will not be alone. He will have with him the redeemed of all ages. Again, I read the verse to you there in Jude and verse 14, where it says, Behold, the Lord cometh with the ten thousands of his saints. Yes. You see, the second coming is two part. We will find the first part, the Lord will come back at the rapture, First Thessalonians chapter 4, where it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see, at the rapture, all believers, those who have died in the Lord, those will be raptured out. And those that have been raptured out into his presence, then we find there will be the tribulation period. And then after that period of some seven years of time, then we find the Lord will come with the second part of the second coming. And that is when he will come. He will come in the clouds and he will return with uh, and uh, bring those with him. But it says and when he comes that time, when he comes, every eye will see him. You see, one day Jesus will literally come again. He will come again. And every eye shall see him. As I said, the second coming of Christ is the return of the living Lord. Is the return of the personal Lord. We find in Acts chapter 1 verse 11, it says this same Jesus. 
Raphael the one, the winner. There in Acts, my friend, this same Jesus will come again. And when he comes, behold, every eye shall see him. We find old Job speaking many years ago. And Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. My friend, when he comes, every eye, every creature shall see him. Amen. Not only will the saved see, but my friend, the unsaved will see him. Be cast away from his presence. In the book of Luke chapter 23, it says, Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. Oh, my friend, everyone, not looking for him, but everyone is going to see him. And for those that are without Christ, Oh, they're going to look for cover, but no cover will be found. We find that he will be seen. He'll be seen by all. He will be seen by those who pierced him. I want us to realize that no one is going to miss seeing him. Now, the word of God, God wants us to understand that those, even those who do not wish to see him, those who would rather do anything than see him, and those who pierce him, they're all going to see him. Judas want to see him. Pilate, Herod, the soldiers, they're all going to see him in that awful day. For then, when he comes again, right. all shall stand before him. What a terrible day it will be for those who reject Jesus Christ as the Savior. Right. Now all people of earth will weep because of their treatment of Jesus. See, when he comes again, the day of grace will be over. The door of salvation will be closed. Then, it will be too late to accept Jesus. Then too late to be saved. When he comes again, he won't stand before men as the Savior. When he comes again, my friend, he will stand before them as their judge. We find that for those who rejected him, for those in that hour, it will be depart from me. Matthew 25. You know, when Jesus comes again, it's going to be a great day when Jesus comes back, comes back with his saints, comes back as our Savior. But how terrible it will be to stand before Jesus as a judge. As the judge not to say. 
How will it be with you? How will it be with you when Jesus comes? With you will it be in a Savior? Or will it be as judge? You're the one that makes that decision. You're the one that must decide. Now you can't decide whether you're going to stand before him or not. That's already said. But have you accepted Christ? Or will you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you're going to, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says don't put it on. Right. Don't wait. Jesus is coming. Behold, he is coming. Now this is the Lord's word. This is his promise. And this is a warning to all people. If Jesus come back today, where will you be tomorrow? He is coming back. Say, so, preacher, I think all of them that's been telling us this, that's what they said too when the rains came and the doors on the ark closed. Yeah. But God didn't want to say. He's coming. He's coming soon again. Folks, if you're not saved, when he comes, your address is going to change. When he comes, you're going to go to a place that's called hell. Say, so, preacher, I don't like, well, I don't, I don't need this. Why? That's why I'm trying to tell you. Whether we like it or not, hell agrees. Right. It's going to be a place of darkness. It's going to be a place of weeping. I'll tell you, that's enough to scare you right there. It's going to be a place of torment. It's going to be a place of anguish. It's going to be a place of everlasting fire. One of my grand Daughters come in this morning and said, Papa, I burnt my finger and had a, I don't know, an ice cube or something over it, trying to take the pain away. You know, there's people in hell trying all kinds of things to take the pain away. But there is no way to take away that pain. When did you get saved today? If you're not saved, why don't you get saved? And if you do that, then one of these days when your address is changed, your address will be to a place all heaven. Hey.
and your address has changed for the last time. Right. For the last time. Right. Where will it be? Where will it be? You can't make a choice then. The choice is made as we stand.